you, our Father. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for gathering us here today. Nobody has come here by mistake. Thank you that we are awake this day and we have the honor to come before your throne. We give you glory, our Father. We give you glory, ancient of days. We magnify you for who it is that you are. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Good morning, church. We have some noisemakers in church. We're going to be writing names today. <laughs> um, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to church. Um, welcome our online audience. Um, thank you all for being here. Even through that rain, you came here. So I'm sure that God has a special word for you today in Jesus' name. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank you, Pimo, for this opportunity. Um, though you've put me on the spot, but it's also a great, great opportunity that I don't take for granted. Um, something that I really like about Ecclesia Hills is the way that we have been taught to know God for ourselves. And that is one thing that is constantly preached at the house, you know. Um, even though Christianity is a religion, one part of the religious exercise that we do not hound anybody on is the fact that God comes to you the way that he wants to come to you at different seasons in your life. So it is also, it's something that I just growing every day, something that I just like to experience daily. And today, we're going to be talking about God as our Father. God has come to us in different ways. Sometimes he's a nurturer, sometimes he's a father, sometimes he's your caregiver, he's your comforter. But today, let us think about him and let us um, just, you know, bask in that place of being his children and let us truly understand what it means for him to be our father. Are we ready? Praise God. Um, I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself. You know, without God, I would truly, truly be like um, spilt milk, just splattered all over the floor, going off every day, without anything holding me together. God has been the one that, that has held me together since the day that I was born. We're human beings and we're very fragile, but you know, like liquid, it needs a container to hold together and that is what God has been to me. And um, in that space, he has also been a father. You know, God is just so great. Every day that I wake up, I truly just appreciate him because he gives me purpose. He gives me a reason to be awake. He gives me a reason to live. Not just any reason. I know it's an important reason. And every day that I wake up, I'm like, God, if I'm still alive today, then there's a reason why I'm here. So I'm going out to fulfill that. So help me, God. God, you're my father. You're going to guide me. You're going to show me the way to go and the best way to go about this. Um, so just talking about God as a father, you know, if you have ever doubted that God is your father, you know, sometimes we just address God by all his different names, you know, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah El Shaddai. But I think it's also very important to go to the nitty gritty. So if you have ever doubted in your life that God is your father, I give you two reasons. Welcome, Pastor Isi and our dear brother, Bobby. Um, I have to put them back on the spot, you know. You can't have your great people in the Lord and just be chatting away. Um, Pastor Idi, don't worry, I see you. <laughs> um, okay. So now, um, talking about God as a father, I'll give you two reasons. The first and the most important reason why God is our father and how he's our father is first out of love. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for our sins. Um, see, what kind of love the father has given us that we should be called children of God God could have just created us. He really didn't have to call us his children. He could have just been his creation and he would just put us in the earth to do his mighty work and just go about it. But he gave his son, 
He sacrificed the son to die for us in order for us to be adopted as his children. So first of all, he loved us enough to give us that opportunity to be called his children. Um, the second reason is his word. His word is yes and amen. His word is true. It doesn't lie. It is a living spirit. So just holding on to his word is good enough. And his word in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 18 says, And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. That's all you need. You just need to take that word back to God and say, God, this is what your word has said. I'm your child. You're my father. You have said that you'd be a father to me. And you can hold on to that any day, any time, because his word says so. So um, now you can wake up every day in the confidence knowing that God truly is your father. Um, so besides being a father, you know, someone could ask you, okay, so what are the benefits of being a child of God? You know, I remember that someone used to crack a joke one time and said, oh, you, you're my father, you're my father. And um, when this person was making money, where were you? You know, so what are the benefits of being your child? But um, you can't really ask God that because there's so many benefits. We have such an inheritance in God. And there's so much that we stand to gain as children of God. And um, I'm going to give you a few things, a few reasons, and um, some inheritances that we have as children of God. One of them is his nature of kindness and patience. God's ability to forgive is super. Um, God is so patient, is so kind. Every time you come to him in repentance, he'll just open his arms and he'll accept you back. But that's when you come in true repentance. He accepts you, he loves you, and he will just take you back. He holds no grudge against you. So when you come to God as your father and you truly apologize, he would let it go. So even your earthly father, sometimes you go, you apologize and you know, for something that you have done and he would remind you, say, hey, remember that time, you did it before you apologized and now you're doing it again. Well, God never does that to you. God would just accept you again as long as you truly come to him and you open your heart to him. God never holds a grudge. He never brings up your past. Um, Psalm 103 verse 12 says, and he assures us, as far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions away from us. That means that our heavenly father would never hold a grudge against us. So as soon as you repent, he just separates it so far. The east and the west we know can never meet. So he separates it so far. So that thing in the middle is the place of your repentance. So as soon as you repent, he separates it. He takes it away. He never brings it back. He never reminds you about it. Even when you fall back into that sin, you come in repentance and he accepts you as his child. It is such a privilege and an honor to have a father like that. So it's something that we should hold on to every day. Another big reason that another um, inheritance that we have in Christ is the fact that we bear his last name. We're children of God. Everywhere that we go to, you're either called the child of God, and then you should carry it with grace. You should carry it with confidence. You know, how good would it be to go for an interview and just say, I'm a child of God, and that already opens the door halfway for you. At least it opens the door of integrity. It opens the door of honesty. It opens the door of trust. Just knowing that this is a child of God. People see you and say, ah, this one coming into my organization is bringing new grace, new fire, new anointing. Just imagine what that would be. You carry his last name, and God does not want a bad name. God does not want a tarnished image name it means that he's giving you so much more that you're carrying so when you carry that you should carry it with confidence knowing the benefits of being a child of God but as you carry that name 
can't sit down across the street and just be blazing ganja and thinking that it's okay. It's not okay because you represent the kingdom. You know, um, I remember when I was going away to school, I'm the first grandchild, first child, so my parents, my grandparents, are always so excited about everything that happens in my life. So they gathered me and everybody was giving advice and my dad said, remember your name. Don't spoil my name. You know, everywhere you go, you would always be this person's daughter. And that's really stuck. So sometimes when I want to do some things, you know, I do something good. They're like, oh, this person's daughter, she did it very well. But the day you do something bad, they will also say, ah, guy's daughter. That's how they are in their family, you know? And then it's also the same thing as a child of God. You know, when you do something, just say, see them Christians, eh, look at them, look at them, they're lying. Is it not a Christian that's doing this, you know? So people would always address you with your father's identity, with your father's name. So when you carry it, carry it with grace, carry it with honesty, carry it with dignity, but also know that God is also pushing you with a lot of good things and the advantages of you being his child is the fact that you have his last name, child of God. Thirdly, the greatest reward as a child of God is that. That reward is in heaven, is our final goal. It is a place that we want to be, is a place that we want to go to, you know, it is a place that is free of moth, it is free of filth, you know. Um, First Peter chapter one, verse three to four says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. So while you're on earth, God will bless you. God will keep you. He will make his face shine upon you. You will prosper in all that you do. But the greatest reward, those things can come. Death can just end it all. You build the biggest house. Yes, you enjoy. You've worked hard. God has blessed you. But it would end one day, but there's a place where none of these things would end, where there's no moth, nothing to spoil it, you know, it's everlasting to everlasting. The greatest gift is kept in heaven for us. So we should all strive to make it there. And just knowing that as children of God, we have been promised this is enough to live a good life while we're on earth. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Now that we know the joys and the inheritance of being his children, it's also important that we know what his expectations of us are as his children. Because um, just like your earthly father has expectations of you, our heavenly father also does have expectations of us. First of all, we must fear him. You must fear God. And this fear for God is birthed out of a place of love is not out of a place of fear. It's not an oppressive kind of fear. You know, um, let me read a scripture. Psalms 103 verse 17 says, from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. So first of all, this is birth out of a place of love. You know, the fear of God is a consciousness to respect him and treat him as your father. You know, um, I'll tell you a brief story. The other day, my youngest daughter, she was misbehaving. So I called her and I went on and on and on. And I was correcting her. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And then, you know, a few tears dropped. Oh, I'm sorry, mommy. I won't do it again. And then I just said to her, oh, do you want me to tell your daddy? It was a river bank of tears just gushing down her eyes. And the interesting thing is that they're very close. So the truth is, he probably would not spank her. But she was just so disappointed in herself that she would disappoint this person that she loved so much. She didn't want to see his disappointed face. That is the fear that we should have in God. 
We don't want to disappoint our father, the father that sent his son to die for you. When Jesus sent his son, he could not come and die. When, when God sent Jesus to die for us, he could not come down to die. So he gave part of himself to die for us. So he has paid the sacrifice. He has, he has paid the price for us. So why do you want to disappoint him? So that fear for, of God is not a fear out of oppression, like, oh, I've seen God, I'm scared. No, it is fear because you love him, because you want to keep him happy, because you want to show him that you truly, truly appreciate him as your father. So he expects that we fear him, and that fear is birthed out of love. Another thing that God expects of us is that we seek him always. God wants to be part of your life. God wants to be part of every nitty gritty part of your life. The small things and the big things. God does not sleep nor slumber. So if you're a night owl, pray to him at night. If you want to be the one who wakes up in the daytime to pray, he's there and he's available. He's never ever too busy. So God is such an able God that he's curing cancer in the house next to you and he's answering your little prayer like, oh, my pencil just broke in this exam and I need to finish this exam. Lord, please help me find a sharp pencil somewhere right now. He wants to be part of that part of your life. And he still wants to be part of the other person's life who needs him if not the person is going to die at that moment. But God just has a way of being there. He's all-knowing. He's, he's all-encompassing. He's able to do it. So never think that ah, this is a small thing. I don't want to bother God about it. But God will see you through. Just involve him in your life. Seek him always because he wants to be part of your life. And Amos 5 verse 4 says, For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me that you may live. So even just to live, you need God. In every aspect of your life, you're driving out, you need God. You're about to go to bed, you need God. You know, even before you come to service, pray to him. He wants to be part of that process. He wants to be part of everything. How cool will it be to just know that, you know, you carry God in the inside of you, and just before you do something, you're like, oh, God, should I cross the road like this? You know, you hear some people give testimonies about small things, like, oh, God told me what to wear, and it was the perfect color, and the person said it was my favorite color, and that's how they picked me. You know, God really wants to be involved in your life like that. So in the small things, seek him. In the big things, seek him. In everything that you do, seek him. Seek him always. Thirdly, God expects us to carry and embody his nature. He wants us to live a life that is Christ-like. Um, of all the um, Beatitudes, the one that is most related to children is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Um, it is important to study the life of Jesus if you want to live a holy life. And, you know, you can just follow the way that he lived. Sometimes we say it's hard. But if there's even nothing, just be a peacemaker. Show love. Let your aura just bring about peace everywhere you go. You should be the one in a WhatsApp group that when everybody is arguing, when you make one comment, peace just sort of flows. You should be the one that when you walk into a room and there's, you know, stiffness in the air, Peace flows. I know it's not easy to do it, but you know, the more that you seek God, the more that he will make it easy for you. He has a way of just making it all blending. You know, um, I'll give an example. My mom, I always say she can activate any space. So um, sometimes maybe we get to a destination before her. Maybe it's like a house that, you know, nobody has been to. You get there, it's hot. The AC is not working. The generator is not this. No diesel. Most of the time, the easiest thing to do is, you know what? Hotel, please, let's go. We'll do this later. But she has a way of coming into that. You could give her a small box room. And by the time she's there for 20 minutes, it's activated. You will feel like there are 40 windows. There's air. There's this. She may just open the door and put a... She could put a mattress on the floor. She's down to earth like that. And 
everybody wants to end up sleeping in the same place where she is, as opposed to wherever it is that you think would have been more comfortable. She just has the grace to activate spaces and the atmosphere. So I just told that story so you know that everywhere you go, you can also carry the grace of peace. You can be the one who is a peacemaker. Wherever it is that you go, you carry peace, you carry joy, you carry love. Let your life bring about something that is the nature of God. You cannot be a child of God and not carry his nature. You cannot be a child of God and have his last name and not be a peacemaker. Nobody is saying go to the street everywhere anybody is fighting. I bring you peace. I bring you peace. But walk past them and let them feel peace. There has to be something about you. You have to be different. You are not like everybody else. You are a child of God. And lastly, God expects that, not lastly, second to last. First of all, we stay away from unclean things. It is so important. You know, just like Emmanuel prayed, it is possible to live above sin. It is possible to live a righteous life. It's not impossible. I know we live in a sinful world, which is always our excuse every day. Ah, this is a sinful world, so, you know, this one can pass. But no, consciously, if you fear God, you will consciously stay away from sin. Um, one of my favorite scriptures and one that I always quote is abstain from all appearance of evil. And then some versions actually say flee from all appearance of evil. What that means is that if you see the scene here, just turn, start running as fast as you can. Flee from it. Don't even have a conversation with it. And it's a conscious thing that you have to do because temptation just sort of crawls and creeps in on you. You know, you're there, you're like, okay, let's have a conversation. You have a conversation. Um, okay, it's not so bad, flicking the hair, and then next thing, it's another story, and you don't want that. So abstain from evil. Keep your hands away from unclean things. Um, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17 says, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. This is the first part of the scripture that I had read before, which was, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. So before God even tells us that he will be our father, he has given us um, an instruction. Stay away from unclean things. That means be separate. For you to... for. The word separate is a very conscious word. So for you to be separated from something, it's like something you need to shave off. It's almost like a skin tag. If they're going to remove a skin tag from you, it needs to be cut off. So separate from sin. Separate from unclean things. Stay away from it. Consciously stay apart from sin. Don't play with it. Don't... Stay in the same room with it if you don't need to be. You know, abstain as much as you can. You know, sometimes, you know, Pastor Mo is always saying, you know, put the knife to your throat. Yes, put it to your throat and run if you have to. Stay away from unclean things because that is what our Father in heaven expects of us. And lastly, God expects that we should lean on him. Lean on him completely. So you see me standing here. I'm not leaning on this thing because I remember the last time that I stepped on this scale, I know what I weigh. So I will not be leaning on this because it cannot hold me. You know, but if I were standing outside against a brick wall, I would lean on it because I trust that this is brick, this is cement, and it would hold me. So that is what God wants you to do. He wants you to lean on him. It's the same way you lie on your bed. When you lay on your bed, you shut your eyes and you sleep, and you just know that this bed will not break. At least I've laid on this bed one year now. It will not break, you know? So you lean on God. God wants you to lean on him completely with everything that you have. Just rely on God. Rest on him. You should not be afraid of anything when you know that you have God behind you. When God has got your back, absolutely nothing can shake you. Absolutely nothing can move you. You just lean on him with all the confidence that you have, just knowing that 
I am leaning on my father. And then if you lean on your father, even your earthly father, when you lean on him, you're tired, you lean on him, he'll muscle up and try to hold you on. So just imagine your heavenly father who has all the power in the world. He would never let you down. Never. So lean on him with everything that you have in all aspects of your life, and he will see you through. So just a little checklist to confirm if you're leaning on the Father. First of all, do not fear. And this is a negative kind of fear. So fear God, but do not fear the world. Do not fear worldly systems, because the word of God has said, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoptions as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. So God has brought us out of slavery, slavery to sin, slavery to the world, slavery to world systems. Why do you want to go back there and be a slave? When now he has called you son, he has adopted you, you still want to go back to the, lay, uh, to the field to go and keep working. No, lean on God. And because you lean on him, you will not fear the things of the world. Nobody is saying um, throw caution to the wind, but don't fear corona. At the same time, it doesn't mean don't wear a mask when they say wear a mask or go to an isolation center and give everybody a peck on the cheek. Don't be silly, but do not fear. You know, do not fear the world. There's news going around every day. If we fear, they'll say the schools in Lekki, there was something that happened in the schools in Lekki. You carry all your children, run to VI. When you get to VI, then there's a shooting. What do you do now? Move them to Ikeja. When you move to Ikeja, you cannot keep running up and down. You're not a yo-yo. You are a child of God. And that because you rely on him, you will not fear and you live confidently every day. Secondly, an important thing to keep in mind is to accept his discipline. God loves us. And there are two ways that somebody can be disciplined. There's a pre and there's a post. The pre is you get disciplined for something. That is when you're being prepared for something. So sometimes you ask God for something and he says no. And then you think, oh, God is mean. God doesn't love me and this. But God is preparing you. He's molding you. He's getting you ready for what it is that is ahead of you. People go to school and say, oh, what's your discipline? What did you get? That is a conscious training towards something that is coming ahead. So sometimes that is how God disciplines us. And then the post is that sometimes God lets you learn from your mistakes. You know, he sees you, he'll watch you because God is a willing God. He lets you, you know, make your own choices. So sometimes you make your choices and they are bad choices. And then when you do make those bad choices, he lets you learn from it. So for example, like fire, I'm sure everybody here somehow has had some encounter with a little bit of fire. Fire is you know, attractive, especially to young children. So the first time, if you put your finger in it and it doesn't burn you, God protects you, it doesn't burn you, you're like, okay, it's nice, it's this thing that lights up. You put your whole hand, you know, your palm in it maybe, it doesn't burn you. The next time it's your whole body that you're gonna throw in it and then it would consume you because he has protected you all that time. But if the first time you stuck a finger in it and you got burnt, nobody will tell you the second time. Maybe the second time you're like, maybe I didn't stick it in, I did sideways, I, let me try the top. And you try the top this time and it burns you again. You would learn. The third time, it would not consume you. You will not let it consume you because you have learned from that experience. So sometimes when God disciplines you, you have to accept it. Take it as a blessing. It is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it is a blessing, so you must accept God's discipline. And even in his word in Romans 8, verse 32, it says, um, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how would he not also along with 
him graciously give us all things. God has the ability to give us all things. So from the beginning, he can just give you that blessing. But he's preparing you for it. He's training you for it. So that when you finally have it, you know what to do with it. God lets you learn from a mistake that you have made so that you do not make that mistake again. So you must accept his discipline. And lastly, you must trust God completely. So this goes back to the crux of my message lean on god and for you to lean on god you must trust him with your whole heart with you must trust him with your might you must trust him with everything in you trust god's timing trust his process even though you may not understand it even though it doesn't make sense to the world around you even though it doesn't make sense to you as far as god has said it he will do it. So trust him completely. Lean on him. He's your Abba. He's your daddy. He's your father. He will never, ever, ever leave you. He means the best for you. So trust him completely. Um, Psalms 125 from verse 1 to 2 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. I just want to encourage you all. There's nobody that loves you like God does. Nobody on earth. You know, every day people prophesy love. I will love you in this life and in the life to come. I wish it was true because I've said it sometimes. But it ends in death. Death would end any love that you feel on this earth. But God's love endures forever. Romans 8, verse 38 to 39, proves this. And it says, neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless you. morning church thank you pastor zena was such a very good word um i'll just we're going to pray but i'm going to just share one thing that stood out for me from all that she said and it is accept his discipline i'll tell you a short story now growing up i didn't like correction and it wasn't something that um how would I put it? It wasn't something I did intentionally, right? So I found that, or rather, my mother noticed that each time I was scolded or I was corrected, I had an attitude. I would just put up an attitude like I'll sulk, and if they give me food, I'll say, oh, I'm not hungry, I won't eat. And honestly, I won't eat that food. And I had an evil mother, like, you know, the typical African mother. If you say you're not eating, she'll be like, oh, thank God, you've saved my money. She won't give you that food. And most times I would go hungry, right? If she was happy that day, they would probably give me a cereal or something to take. And then one day, she reported me to my father. And apparently, I don't know how long this has gone on for, but I was just summoned to the bedroom, and my dad was like, hmm, that he heard I'm always rejecting food. And I went like, no, I don't reject food. He said, OK, now why is it that when they asked me to do something, I wouldn't do it? And I tried to give him re a reason. And then he says, it's, a, it's only a fool that doesn't like to be corrected. And in my mind, that even angered me the more. I'm like, OK, are you saying I'm a fool? But I didn't say that to him, of course. I was so angry. I was now just boiling in my spirit. And this didn't make sense to me. But my father passed on early. But somehow I saw that as a way of God preparing me for what was to come. 
But somehow, that word was just stuck in my head. Like growing up when I got into the university, people would correct me. And when I try to get offended, right, I'll just remember it's only a fool that does not like correction. And honestly, that has helped shape my life. That has helped build my character in particular. Sometimes when I hear people say, oh, you're nice, you're meek, and I'm like, eh, you don't know where I'm coming from. <laughs> okay, so that's exactly how the love of God works. Sometimes he corrects us. It's very painful. You must admit that. You must be self-aware. You must agree that, oh, I have offended God, and he has tried to discipline me, and I will learn from it. So this morning, let us pray. God is a very good father. He doesn't forsake his own. He loves us so much with an everlasting love that he has called us his children. And we'll begin with some scriptures. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18, it says, Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This morning, let us ask God for the grace to be separate, that he'll be a father to us. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Saledea, Le Catama non de Ila Ledosa Libra Nazela, Kama Yo se Taibro Nuse Balibre Nala Hayeda, Le Catata Monde Riza Labreno Masse Calabrone Shaledea. Father, I pray, O oh God, that I'll come out from among them and be separate, O oh God. May Atama Soliana Mashanka Luderia separate me from everything that defiles, O oh God. Separate me from everything that corrupts, O oh God. God. Separate me, O oh God, from everything, O oh God, that will not allow me to be your daughter, O oh God. Maya seita libre no za la keda manande shaliba. Seya nando seika dejo debro no za lebrona na seika tama lo deis kataya. Seima ha debre no ma teika dose te lima no sha te taya. Kaleya handa aya bozoi de libre na ta te talia. Leiko teima la dosa tamaruza. Lord, let your word sink deep inside of me. You said, come out from among them. Do not touch anything that is unclean. Matatela la dosa papali rarahaya. Kanaya nanda seika tama lebra no seida rarahaya. Tema shunde ribre na katoi maledosa taria. Hadebre nanda seima topali rarahaya. Come out from among them. Later, so my libra na ma shea la rosa. Lord, give me the grace, oh God. Equip me for what is to come. Make my heart ready. Tamaseya la tama lo seira la haya. Your word says that I'll walk through the fire and it will not burn me. I'll walk through the waters and it will not swallow me up. Katai me lira la dai satama yi karado boshila. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. I may live in a corrupt and dirty world, but I will serve the Lord with all my heart. Kataima say that Ubrenesha Labra and Asana Dea Kayananda has said a rather devotion. Same a cote papa rubre rarradisha tara. Came a doze ribro mashana dea. Come a ronto zebra no mashana Ya, 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 ya,
translation it says the same way a loving father feels towards his children that's but a sample of your tender feelings toward us your beloved children who live in awe of you I think there's another translation that says as a father pities his children so the Lord pities those who love him and so this morning we're going to be praying for the compassion of God let's ask God to have mercy upon us let's ask God for his compassion all the days of our lives let God's grace carry you through in the times when your strength will fail you it's only the mercy of God that will speak for you Lord we pray for your mercy Lord we ask for your compassion oh God as oh God a father pities his children so the Lord pities those who love him Lord God Almighty have mercy upon us oh God have compassion on us, oh God. Have compassion upon your children. Have your compassion upon your sons and your daughters. Have compassion upon those, oh God, who you have separated and called your own, oh God. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Lord, I plead for mercy, oh God. Over my life, I ask for mercy. Over my brothers and sisters, I ask for mercy. Over my children, I ask for mercy. Over my mothers, I ask for mercy. Over my fathers, I ask for mercy. Over your church, I ask for mercy. Over this nation, I ask for mercy. Have your way, oh God. Have your way. Lord, have mercy upon us, O God. We pray for your compassion, O God. We pray for your mercy that's from everlasting to everlasting. Even to our children's children, Lord, we ask for mercy. Leka dose tama luga dose tibre nuja la vida. Seika tama lira rara haba baba ruse taka teya. Seima baba nunze rira raba sheita rara rahaya. Seika toma shila nura baseya. Yes, God. Leima tori bi shantaro rila. Gando si rabado shalahan mila la hadira. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And lastly, we're going to um, I'm going to read from John 15. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And John 15, verse 4 and 5, it says, Abide in me and I in you. 
As a tree cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Honestly, we can't do anything without God. You can't even live a good life without God. And so we're going to be praying this morning. Let's pray for courage. Let's pray for strength. When the road seems lonely and rough, when there is no reason for you to even serve God, pray for the grace and the courage to abide in him because his word says that without me you can do nothing we want to lean on God all the days of our lives we want to be connected to the father Spirit of the living God, here we are, oh God. When everything fades away, it's only you, Jesus. We look up to you, O oh God, and we want to be connected to you, O oh Lord our God. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for courage. I pray for hope. I pray for faith. Even if the odds are against me, Lord, I choose to hold on to you, oh God. I choose to hold on to you, oh God. I choose to carry your grace, oh God. I choose to carry your power. I choose to carry your strength. Lay my zira rahana moza lika to shikabura liya. Say my ruza bashala nara luna masai karaliya. Lay my hadeya basai kadaruru shalira. Lay my duja lira rahana moza liya. Oh Lord, come and make our hearts your home. Yes. And let's do this song together. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Oh Lord, search me. Father, we bless your name. We worship you today. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. We honor you. We love you. We declare your power. 
we declare your presence. We declare that every one of us, our nature is changing from the inside. You're working something on the inside of us. We love correction. We love your word. We're not like bastards who will not listen. We're not like the mule that must be forced. We have a willingness to follow you. We want to follow you, our Father. We want to lean on you. So we yield ourselves to you, to your work in our spirits. Every one of us, we yield ourselves to you. We ask you to work in us. Work in us the works of power. Work in us the works of righteousness. In Jesus' name. I want to invite Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred, would you like to come? Please, you may be seated. We're still praying. Today's a day of prayer, as you can see. Just leaning on the Father is not something we can do of our own accord. Um, Pastor Fred is actually the youngest grandfather I know. <laughs> so he has, he, has a grand, he has a grandchild. So <laughs> I want him to wear the position of the Father and bless us. Like sit in the place of God. Imagine what God will be saying over us and declare that. Because we have all called out to God and say, God, be a father to us. God, reach out to us. God, speak over us. So imagine that God was speaking back to us. If you can put your mind back in the throne room and see what God is saying to his children, then, sir, will you declare that over us? And let's all say amen. Your mercy flow. Let your healing flow. Let the peace of the Spirit of God overtake every human effort ancient of days the father of the fathers we look to you come on just lift up those hands everybody Some moments ago, I sat there and I was like, Lord, what if he calls me up to say something? What do I say? I'm incapable of original content. May I not speak except as the oracles of God. For every hand lifted up, Lord, I want to pray for a word that will stir them from where they are and trigger only that which you can do. <laughs> Let eternity breathe upon time and transform our wombs from human to eternal. We arrest time, the time, the palmer womb, the locust, 
the caterpillar has eaten. Right now. Right now. Father of lights. Shine in those dark areas of our lives. Those things that we do not even share with people. But we know that there is darkness. Flood our life, O oh God, with your mercy and your grace. Every condemnation, every accusation, every bleeding wound. Stand with the leadership of this house. And I ask that you would raise soldiers in this place. Not civilians, but soldiers. Sharpshooters that will not waste their boot bullets on the mountain top. Thank you for precision. Unusual ministries yet to be seen on the earth. <laughs> where you are going there is no road so you are the pathfinder you will blaze new trails stop looking for signboards your life will become the signboard where there seems to be no way God would make a way ministries will be birthed beyond your head beyond your soul the Lord will bath in you that which only the Lord will take glory for And so he has hidden you in obscurity for a purpose. So that when there is a showing forth, you know it is not man, but God. Mother in Zion, start mothering, irrespective of your age. You are a mother in Zion, and you have looked at yourself too long as young. In fact, you are a grandmother. Permit me to say for if you're a grandmother or a grandfather and you have the mentality of a father, you endanger a generation. Give birth to mothers. That's your womb. You, you are going to mentor the next leaders. Show them. Craft them. Shape them. I see the Lord doing wonders in this place I see the king doing wonders in this place for those of you called to rule in the place of leadership. Arise! 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 You are not meant to feed from the palace. You are meant to feed the palace. Arise! And speak to leadership. Fear not! Fear not! Hallelujah! Just before I drop the mic, somebody here, you are like the paintbrush of the Lord. And he's going to paint. Those strokes will bring out beauty and color. So let the Lord paint through you. Colors. Colors. Father, bless your children. Some days ago, sir, we were at a dinner with them, T.Y. We were meant to go down to do a recording. And I just went to the keyboard. It wasn't meant, to, it wasn't planned. But as we began to play, all the plans just scattered. May God scatter your plans. Because you know when he scatters your plans, it's because he wants to give you his plans. You know you can show off. But God can show forth. 
I'm tired of showing up. Let God take the place and let me hide. Lord, teach us how to hide. Mm, under the shadow of the Almighty, leaning, predisciplined, predisciplined. Ha! Father, thank you. Let's just rise up on our feet. Then let me stop. You know, I do not come to you with the wisdom of men, Paul says. When God confirms his word, it's so powerful. Some days ago, we met at the airport, and I was just telling my wife that something is happening in the nation, and God is just shifting people, bringing them. May you never become like any other church. May you not follow the patterns that men have crafted as the norm. May you never fit into the mold that men have put there. Those molds that are so rigid that God is even struggling to fit. May you be a misfit so you can fit into God's plans. Dare to be different. God is shifting, reshaping. <sighs> Let's just lift up those hands. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. We could go on and on. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Why don't you just recommit yourself to him in a way that he can send you anywhere? And you are ready. <laughs> yes. Hey. 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 Oh, come on, make melodies unto the Lord. Yes. Let it hear the roar of the lion on your inside. Yes. Esther's anointing was not the same as Deborah. May the Lord govern through your beauty. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Bring it down a bit. May the Lord govern through your beauty. It's a gift. May the Lord govern through your beauty. Some of us are called to that world and we think it's not spiritual. But the Lord wants to use the beauty. The beauty. The, who, is, who are those in the cosmetic industry or in the fashion industry or in the may the Lord govern through your beauty you are going to raise models I was in a film training some days ago in the middle of training I just turned I said somebody is called to run a grooming school here who is that person who is that in the middle of training nothing to do and the prophetic hit because many times we think we can box God and there was someone there who God had been speaking to about a grooming school. I said, someone here, your endorsement is going to actually lift people. The woman was shocked. She came to meet me. I'm approving contracts. And I was going to do it carelessly. And what you said, for two days, huge sums of money were transferred. But she thought she knew what to do. But what came to shake her up that, listen, this is not you, it's God. Please stop looking down on what God has chosen to anoint in your life. You are not anybody. You are too unique. Father, we thank you for boldness to do your will and not our will. Boldness to dare to be different. Boldness to embrace pre-shaping, pre-discipline so that when the storms come, we soar on them. In Jesus' name. Thank you, sir.
living bread which came down from heaven if anyone eats of this bread he will live forever and the bread I shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of this world the Jews quarreled among themselves how can this man give us his flesh to eat then Jesus said to them most assuredly I said to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and i will raise him up on the last day for my flesh for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and i in him as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Verse 58. Oh, sorry, John chapter 6, verse 58. I want us to read this place together. John chapter 6, verse 58. Shante mali krasto mosaya nambale. Doje Kasuta Mayendo Libra Dost Ninkasota Male Basharabo. Verse 58, let's read together. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers at the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. We're going to, at this moment, pass the communion elements around to you. First of all, we're going to pass the bread. And as you hold the bread, please wait for every one of us who will eat together. Washes you clean. I'm the pure. 
Father, we thank you for the bread. We raise it up and we bless it. Just the same way you took the bread and you broke it and gave thanks. So we give thanks for the bread. May this bread be life in us. Life in all our flesh. By this bread we declare that we eat your flesh. We participate in your life. We lift up the bread to you. I want you to speak over your bread right now. Thank you for the bread. We'll break it, oh God. Let it be life to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the bread. Receive the life of God. We raise it up. We testify of your goodness. This is life eternal, that a man may eat and not die. We declare redemption for our body. We declare restoration for every broken part of us. Yes, by your bread, we receive the life of God. The life, the life of God is manifest in this, that we eat and participate in your body. We receive life before you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may eat the bread. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This, this is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. So Father will raise up the cup before you. raise up the cup this is the blood of the New Testament which you've poured out for the sins of all the world who we'll receive this with revelation we lift it up just as you lifted up the cup on the last supper and you said this is the New Testament in my blood and whoever drinks this cup has life in him for as the life of the flesh is in the blood, so the life of the Son of Man is poured out into your life as you drink. So lift up your cup and speak life. Speak life. Father, this cup has life. It is just juice, but it turns into the life of God this hour. It's bringing restoration to my body. It's bringing redemption to my soul. This cup lifted up is restoring me. Your spirit is born on the inside of me. Every disease is taken away. Every token, every sacrifice, every ordinance that is speaking against me has been purged. On account of this sacrament, I receive the life of God on the inside of me. Say, I drink the, I drink the blood of the Son of Man. I have life in me. Say this after me. Say, I have life in me. Say it again. I have life in me. I drink the body. I drink the wine. It is the sign of your blood. As I drink your blood, I have life in me. I have life in me. I have life in me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may drink. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you. 
as you drink it, remember me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread, for your body that you broke and the blood you shed. Now we remember your wondrous love. You broke your body. You shed your blood. Now we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body. You shed your blood. Shout it out. Now we remember. Now we remember your wondrous love. Open eyes, open eyes in the spirit. Open hearts, open spirits. Every sin has been paid for. Every 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 ought has been covered. Every debt has been paid for. This morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare redemption today through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. We declare the present power of our God. We just declare the atmosphere of His grace around us. You are above curses today, in the name of Jesus. You are above cursed today in the name of Jesus Christ. You are above reproach today in the name of Jesus Christ. You've been washed by the power of God. You've been cleansed by the power of God. You've been redeemed by the power of God today in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare redemption. We declare redemption. We declare redemption in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A higher level of revelation upon you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.